and welcome to The View from the EBRD. We are this year in Jordan at the Dead Sea and uh, we've got several finance ministers and central bank governors at the event and one of them is here with me, Dana Riznitsa Ozola. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, the Finance Minister of Latvia. Now, thank you very much for making it. Latvia this year has been slightly, for the wrong reasons, in the news with the um, ABLV uh, alleged money laundering scandal. Now, tell me, has this had an impact on the banking sector, on political operations? That is one of the, uh, I would say, elements in uh, our um, process that has been already lasting for the two years while we are remediating the AML risks that have been uh, extremely high in the, in the non-residential banking um, uh, sector. Uh, we have been remediating uh, those uh, already s since uh, two years ago. Now we are speeding up while uh, the ABLV has uh, uh, get, got the 311 announcement by the U.S. Treasury, but uh, we are dedicated to clean the sector and uh, get to the levels of the business that uh, we can control the risks uh, uh, with. Have you had some specific policy responses that you would highlight? Yes, some of those. Besides the things that we have already done, increasing the supervisory investigation capacities, uh, stringing the requirements for the banks, uh, improving, improving our risk analysis uh, capacities, we are now actively working uh, towards decreasing of the non-residential, high-risk non-residential businesses. Like uh, recently, the, the parliament passed through a new uh, law that is um, forbidding the banks to uh, operate and uh, service the shell companies, those companies that are registered in the constituencies that do, do not require the financial reporting, and uh, those companies can, that cannot explain where the money comes from and what, who is the final beneficiary. And uh, have you felt like this has had an impact on just in general uh, overshadowing operations of the government, or have you been able to push through all the key plans in the budget for this year? It doesn't have any uh, uh, direct effect on the budgetary spending or the economy while we have been uh, um, uh taking the, the preventive actions long ago I mean, asking the, uh, the banks to uh, accumulate additional capital and, uh, and the liquidity ratios are much higher than the, the rest of the banks servicing the, the local business. So this side is okay. So we've been already doing our homework before in advance. Uh, of course, it has uh, put some shadow on the uh, reputation of the sector. But as I understand it, I mean, uh, every crisis is kind of a crisis is also uh, your opportunity and I'm pretty sure that we will come out of it stronger and uh, will once again show that uh, we are a country and the government that can deal with the with the difficult situations uh, situations like back in uh, 2009 when we were deep into the crisis uh, we have uh, now come to the state that we are the, one of the countries with the high, highest GDP growth rates and the stable economy and strong fiscal stance. And what are your key budget plans before the election? Because there is an election this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we are one of those countries that uh, do not only talk about the necessity of the structural reforms, we do implement those. For this year, besides the defense reaching 2% of our GDP, two major uh, priorities that were um, on the table, that was uh, the implementation of the notable tax reform, increasing the uh, or introducing the progressivity, restructuring the CIE, um, See, see, uh, see, uh, corporate income tax uh, uh, mo model uh, fostering the, the investment and uh, implementation of the health uh, insurance system, increasing the finance to uh, our funding to health notably by one fifth, uh, uh, which is historically probably the biggest allocation to, to, to health. So this has been the no, this has been, have been the, the priorities for this year. Well, once again, keeping the strong fiscal stance, we have been successful in implementation of these two uh, big uh, priorities. For this year, as you correctly say, we, we are we are going to have the elections in, in the autumn. This doesn't deter us from the difficult the tasks that the government is now still pursuing, like shrinking the public sector, like revising the budgetary spending, uh, that is a new initiative already uh, carried out for the third year year, so showing the people that it is worse to trust your euro to this government because there's a transparent way of its distribution. This is the government that is also revising their 
earlier decisions taking just to be more efficient and uh, thus also trusted. So for the first task is to uh, keep it strong and uh, do not follow any uh, pre-election um, promises that uh, might be too populistic and uh, not the best ones for the economy or the, or, or the people in, in, in general. And the second one for the next year, it's definitely going to be R&D because we need to increase our spending for the uh, research and science so that to, uh, to strengthen our competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And that will keep growth at a similar level which has been quite significant last year at over four percent nearly four percent wasn't it it was uh, uh, over four percent and this year has also been quite successful the first quarter uh, shows the growth rate of 4.3 so quite a nice pace of development but this is then the high time to do our difficult homework to to make the economy much more stable and uh, and sustainable minister thank you very much thank you